What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. Today I'm gonna to cover some other medications, some additional medications that people have requested. So one of the most commonly prescribed medications that I wanna cover that goes hand in hand with venlafaxine is a medication called desvenlafaxine or Pristique. Now, desvenlafaxine is an active metabolite. It's O-desmethylvenlafaxine, ODV for short, of venlafaxine. And how does this metabolite come about? Well, when you take medications, your body usually metabolizes these medications sometimes into an active metabolite. So in this case, your liver, and specifically the cytochrome P450 system, is going to metabolize venlafaxine into this metabolite ODV. Now, what the company did was they decided that instead of giving someone venlafaxine, which the body has to metabolize to make the active metabolite anyway, we might as well just give people a medication with the active metabolite already there. So this, this is sort of how it came about. It's really a derivative of venlafaxine and it has many of the same properties. Now, as far as FDA approvals go, venil, death venlafaxine is only approved for major depressive disorder although it is used off-label for a variety of other conditions. So you may be prescribed it for different things, similar to what the FDA approvals are for venlafaxine. Now the mechanism of action, you guys already know it if you watched my video on venlafaxine, so I'm just gonna briefly touch on it one more time. So this medication is going to boost the neurotransmitters serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. It does so by blocking the serotonin reuptake pump, also blocking the norepinephrine reuptake pump, and it increases dopamine in the frontal cortex because that norepinephrine reuptake pump is the one that removes dopamine from the frontal cortices. So what we see here is an increase in all three neurotransmitters, but specifically we're going to focus on the serotonin and norepinephrine component because that's the majority of how this medication is thought of. It's thought of as a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Now the dosing is a little bit easier and then what we see in venlafaxine, uh, if you've watched that video, then you know that you have to get to doses above 225 milligrams to start to get that norepinephrine effect. Now, if we want to get the norepinephrine effect, we got to go high with venlafaxine. So how is it different with Pristique? So with Pristique, it's a little bit different in the sense that you start at 50 milligrams per day, and then you can increase to a, a maximum dose of 100 milligrams per day. Now, people do go above, these dosing, these doses, sometimes you'll see people on upwards of 400 milligrams of Pristique at certain, in certain cases, but there's a couple things that you always have to remember about increased uh, doses. Number one, if you're going above the FDA approved limit, you need to justify why you're going above that limit. Is this person a rapid metabolizer of the drug? Are they, did we do blood levels? Do we know whether or not they're low, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to kind of justify why we're doing that. And we have to also be mindful that things like side effects are going to increase. The other benefit of Pristique is that it's, although it's more potent at the serotonin transporter, so that's the same thing with venlafaxine, which was more potent at the serotonin transporter, what we see is that it gets greater norepinephrine transporter inhibition relative to venlafaxine. So if you're trying to get that norepinephrine effect much earlier and with lower doses, then Pristique is the option for you because it's going to, it has a little bit greater potency for that, for inhibition of the norepinephrine transporter. So that's one thing that separates this from venlafaxine and might make this a better option for somebody who's looking to choose between the two of them. Um, the next thing to say about this is this is a controlled release formulation, so you can't crush it, chew it, uh, break it in any way. You want to take the capsule whole, you don't want to modify it in any manner. The same, the same issues with venlafaxine that we saw with withdrawal, and I talked about extensively in the venlafaxine video, are going to apply here for Pristique. What you're going to find is sometimes it's very difficult to taper off this medication. It often requires many months in some cases of a very, very slow taper for people who are very sensitive to, those withdrawal, to that withdrawal syndrome. Also, yeah, another technique that I talked about in the venlafaxine video extensively was this idea of using fluoxetine. The, this is essentially the SSRI with the longest half-life. So this will help to alleviate some of those withdrawal symptoms. So you start that before tapering the medication and then you can slowly taper the medication. So these are the options here. 
Other things we have to be mindful of, just like with venlafaxine, you have to be mindful of blood pressure increases. So you wanna be monitoring blood pressure before and during treatment to make sure there's not a significant rise in blood pressure. Now, side effects are going to be, as expected, very similar to what we've seen with venlafaxine, but I've broken them down by percentage, listing the ones that are the most common and what percent of patients who use this medication actually get this side effect. So the number one most common side effect is nausea. 12% of patients will get this. The second most common side effect is dizziness. That will be 8% of patients. The third most common side effect is going to be increased sweating, and that's going to be 6%. And the fourth most common is constipation at 5%. There are other side effects to be mindful of. Some people have decreased appetite. Some people experience decreased libido or sexual dysfunction, as well as abnormal dreams, ringing in their ears, and vertigo. So we want to be mindful that other things are possible, but the most common ones are listed above. Now, I've had a lot of questions and people wondering, you know, can you combine this with mirtazapine to make California rocket fuel? The answer is yes, of course you can, because it's pretty much the same as venlafaxine, and you're trying to get that increased norepinephrine effect, so you're going to combine these two medications the same way. Um, mirtazapine is a popular option for combination. Also, if someone's having difficulty with depression and insomnia, you may choose something like trazodone at night to help that patient. And again, if you're trying to target additional neuro neurotransmitters, say more dopamine effect, you may use something like bupropion or Wellbutrin, which is also a popular medication combination with desmetylfaxine. Now, obviously, mono monotherapy is preferred. We, we want to make sure we're titrating to an appropriate dose. We want to make sure the patient stays on the medication for a long enough period of time. But when those two things have been done and there's still not full remission of symptoms, we may want to look for combination therapy. So that's where things like California rocket fuel come into play. To wrap this up, I'll say that desmental vaccine does offer some benefits. The main benefit in my mind is that you're targeting a higher potency neurotransmitter, uh, neuroepinephrine transporter inhibition at lower doses. So, and you're already starting with the active metabolite that in the case of venyl vaccine, the body actually has to metabolize to this metabolite before it starts to do what it's supposed to do, right? So I like the idea of starting with the active metabolite to begin with, I like the idea of lower dosing, and I like the theoretical idea of it hitting these, neuro, these norepinephrine transporters at a much higher potency than venlafaxine, requiring lower doses. With that said, it still has the same problems that venlafaxine has in terms of withdrawal. It can be difficult to taper off of this medication. It also has the same side effects, so we're not really getting a whole lot of change from that perspective, but again, this may be a good option if you're looking to target specifically that norepinephrine system. I'm going to hold the video there. If you guys are finding this content useful, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we will continue covering the medications that you're interested in.